All right, greetings everyone. Thank you for attending our webinar today by Summit Marketing powered by BIS. The webinar entitled, How to Boost Brand Awareness and Increase Leads During Uncertain Times. We want to thank everyone for joining in with us as we begin this webinar. Hopefully everyone is logging in and, and ready to buckle up and go for a ride with us as we help you as to, to teach you about how bo how boosting brand awareness increases leads. And now I'll begin the introduction of our speaker for this afternoon. Mr. Philip Long. Philip Long is a technologist and entrepreneur who specializes in providing technology solutions and security consulting, as well as marketing strategies to business, businesses along the Gulf Coast. Uh, Philip Long has worked in the IT and marketing industry for over 20 years. Uh, he is currently the CEO of BIS, Business Information Solutions and Summit Marketing, where they house over 600 clients from the, Gulfport to Gulf Breeze. Uh, Philip Long is also the current owner of five different businesses, and he is a certified information system security professional. Uh, Philip Long, I guess if you want to go ahead and give a hey to everybody. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to join us. We're going to go over some things that I think are very relative to the market uh, in, of today. And uh, I want to start off just by kicking off with a couple of facts, and one of which is 63% of businesses say their biggest uh, content challenge is driving traffic and uh, generating leads is one of the, you know, the biggest challenges is they can't generate leads. And at the end of the day, if you can't generate leads, you can't have a predictable outcome for your business. And, you know, once you get to where you can start predicting your own outcomes, you're going to be in a lot better position uh, to be able to be in the driver's seat of growing your business. Another one is that only 32% of businesses have a marketing strategy in place. What we see is, uh, you know, the, the old cliche of, um, you know, I know that 50% of all marketing works, but I don't know which 50% does so you keep it all going and really just a lot of unknowns out there. Uh, another uh, fact here is that 14% of businesses failed because of poor marketing. And you know when you think about marketing in essence, um, if your marketing looks bad, you look bad. And you know, that's kind of the tip of the spear, as we call it. And if you have poor marketing, then the reality is people's perception of you is likely to be poor. And another uh, fact is, is that 19% of small businesses fail because their competition just simply outperforms them. So, you know, we not only have to be looking inwardly and, and uh, making sure that you know, we're keeping a tight ship and doing the right things, but we also have to be looking outwardly uh, and see what our competitions are doing. And we're going to talk about that. You know, I've been in this game for uh, really over 20 years. And one of the things that I really and truly believe, and I tell myself this very often, is that um, more is lost by indecision than wrong decision. And indecision is ultimately the thief of opportunity and it's going to steal you blind. And that's something that, of course, Cicero said uh, back in, I forget, I think that was like, it was 32 BC or something. Uh, you know, this has been uh, a very age old principle, and yet I see it all the time. Uh, the, you know, paralysis by analysis or whatever you want to call it that business owners go through. And, you know, I can speak clearly on this because I are one and um, you know they that you can you can oftentimes you know try to either you know a couple of things I see happen one is they try to um, you know put together the perfect marketing plan well there is no perfect marketing plan and you'll just keep working and working and working and working 
and you will wind up, uh, you know, never executing, which can be very, very, very uh, costly. So let's talk about really what the secret recipe is and really an outline for what we're going to go over today. Um, first off, we want to talk about defining the target audience. And then we want to talk about consistent branding. Um, then we're going to go into, you know, marketing and retargeting budget, and then ultimately an effective marketing strategy. So we often refer to, you know, the target audience uh, as um, something that we call it an avatar here. And ultimately you're looking for that perfect, uh, you know, that perfect person right however you craft that perfect client a lot of times the ways that you can determine that is you can poll your existing clients if you've been around a while you can go figure out you know what is it about that client that makes them unique what is it is that makes them perfect here's some you know some basic questions you can ask yourself is of course you know just common uh demographics age gender location occupation, you know, socioeconomic, you know, how much money they make. Uh, what are the things that, um, you know, that set them apart? And then, you know, what do they value? What are the things that are important to them? Another one is, you know, what groups do they associate with? And I say that because when you're building, like say in Instagram and Facebook, the audiences have gotten incredible the, the level that you can deep dive into defining your audience. And that to me is one of the, the beautiful things about social media marketing uh, is because you can really not have a conversation with people that you don't want to talk to if you're able to define that audience better. And it makes a lot of sense because you don't want to pay to talk to somebody that you don't want to talk to, you know, that's not a potential client of yours or, or, you know, whatever you're selling or whatever you're doing doesn't pertain to them. Number one, it's noise to them. And number two, there's no positive outcome that's going to come in to you. And this is unlike any other of the uh, marketing medias that we have out today. You know, if you were to drop yourself into uh, a billboard, you're going to have tons of people probably, you know, upwards of 95% of the people aren't really your, your target audience. And same way with, you know, the old yellow pages, right? You know, you at least got to sort by, um, by the, you know, the category or whatever, but still a lot of people saw that ad that didn't do it. And it was, you know, very expensive to run those type ads. Another one is really to identify their pain points. And I say that because in order to be effective, really at the end of the day, what people want from what they're going to exchange their money from for, I'll say, is, you know, what problem do you solve? You know, what is it that uh, I would, if, you know, if you could solve this for me, I'd give you my money. And you need to think on those very basic levels in order to get there. And then also, what are their interests? What are their hobbies? And if you can kind of get that list of these things together and sit down with somebody in the marketing world that's good at, you know, building out these, these audiences as they're, you know, that's what they're actually called uh, in, the, in the social uh, platforms. And you're going to be able to very effectively have that component. You're talking to the right people now. And of course, we want to uh, then... You know, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about what message you need to have to those right people. And uh, so here's just a, a, a way that you can kind of determine what you already have. If you have a website and you're using Google Analytics, you can go and simply look at that. Um, you can look at that uh, data and it's readily available to you out there in the marketplace. You can click on it and you can see 100% uh, you know, what, what it is that you're wanting to, uh, to help build that audience. Here's another one on social media. The other one was on Google where you'd pull that from a website. This, uh, they call it insights. This would be more uh, pertaining to Facebook and to Instagram where you're going to be able to go out on those sites and you're going to be able to 
uh, you know, pull them and pull that data from those sites. Okay, so let's talk about the second uh, component of it. And that is consistent branding. It is very important to have consistent branding. If you go and you look at like some professional marketers out in the out in the place, you're going to see that they have um, really purpose and personality into what they do. And I'm going to show you some examples here shortly. Uh, they're going to use their logo again, that brand. They're going to have that brand awareness. I read this has been some time back, but we're inundated with up to 10,000 logos per day. And I was thinking of this, um, I forget a while back, and I actually, I was in the shower at my house, second shower, and I looked in there just to see how many brand logos I had, and I believe there was 13 brands in just a shower alone that you don't even think about your your mind is going there so in order to stand out you've got to have that purpose and personality you've got to have the correct color uh palette you've got to have the right fonts and you know typography again you want it to look consistent across the board so that whenever people see you they see you when they see your ad they see you and again people form very strong uh, uh, bonds with brands. You think of what Apple has done. They have built an incredible brand where people will swap out phones for, you know, one model to the next with just really a couple of features and pay a thousand, twelve hundred dollars to do so. so. And it gets down to their packaging. You know, all of the touch and feel of who they are as a company is, in, is exhibited in everything they do not just the product itself but the marketing that goes along with it so you know this is a, a some some information about how consistency is key um, there will be five to seven brand interactions before a consumer remembers a brand now that's if you're branding correctly if you have a lot of different looks and feels it could take a lot more so i always refer to it as we want to get a lot of juice for the squeeze and uh, in order to do that we have to be disciplined and keeping ourselves consistent another one is that uh, brand colors improve recognition by over 80 percent you know we see a big migration i'll talk about a little bit more of people moving from Facebook into Instagram. Pictures, uh, videos, they really tell a story. And it could be that you know it's easier to digest a picture or a video. But again, those are the those are colors, those are, are themes that are made up within the marketing. And it takes 50 milliseconds for consumers to judge the visual appeal of your brand. Very, I mean, snap you know snap decisions determine whether they like you or do not like you and uh, consistent branding across channels increases revenue by 23 percent which means that you need to have that same look and feel uh, on your Facebook your Instagram your LinkedIn your your ads that you do if you do any print ads if you're doing televisions if you're doing billboards you need to have that same look and feel and it needs to be very intentional uh, and it needs to be thought out so let's talk a little bit about developing a budget that's kind of the next concept if you look very uh if you look into the the marketplace with social media it has extremely uh it's changed dramatically uh over the past you know it's always changing but i would say over the past two years there's been a lot of changing that goes on and one of the things is you know it used to be that if you had followers on a page and you made a post well they would all see it well now i don't know if you um if you look at it, um, you know, if you look and see, if you watch your, your metrics closely, you can do a, a great post and you could have a thousand followers on your page and maybe eight or 10 might see it. And that of course is a, is an algorithm based on the, um, 
you know, the engagement that you've had with those people. And that's why it's important to post consistently so that they kind of have a, have a, a, you know, a day and time when they expect to see your stuff and all that, where you keep them engaged because things go further as far as viewers go, um, impressions go, the more, uh, you know, reaction that you have to it, the more likes and the more, uh, emojis, the more comments, the more shares. And if you think about it from a perspective of what social media channels are doing, ultimately, you know, they're trying to make money. And if they have content that is uh, pleasant for people and they're engaging in it, well, that means they're going to stay on that platform longer so that they can sell more ads. So my point in all this is, is that this is an ever-changing world and in the at the end of the day in the final analysis what, what you're seeing is that if you're going to play you're going to have to pay nobody really likes that and you know if you guys have been following you know our company you know just kind of be completely transparent you know we separated uh kind of dissolved uh bis designs because uh, and we started Summit Marketing within the uh, umbrella of Business Information Solutions. And my whole goal is to do, um, you know, return on investment ads to bring revenue in from an ad. And, you know, I'm very critical of people who post pretty pictures because it takes a lot of work to post a pretty picture. And at the end of the day, you may be gaining some you know, some, uh, you know, market likability, or you may be gaining a certain thing, but very few people see it. And it's not enough juice for the squeeze. And, you know, at Summit Marketing, we really want to be able to help people, help businesses grow their company. And, you know, I see businesses, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been in literally hundreds and hundreds of businesses, sat with hundreds of business owners, and this is a major pain point where they can't have predictable revenue because they can't have a say in uh, how many sales they have. They're basically, you know, the market is driving them rather than them driving the market. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some secret sauce. This is a very basic budget calculator. And I want to go through this with everybody because it is... Um, it's a reasonable uh, uh, calculator as it relates to how much you need to be spending. You're going to need to ultimately come up with a couple of things, just top line as any business owner. You need to figure out what is the value of a client? You know, what is the lifetime value of a client? And, you know, I can help people with that. It's not really that hard to do, and at least to get a basic number. Uh, but you need to know what that is because you don't want to buy something. Uh, you don't want it to cost, you know, if you're going to buy a client, as I would say, you don't want it to cost more than the client's worth. And so you have to be really careful because ultimately it's like flying an airplane and every new client you get, the closer you get to the ground. So you want to know this kind of stuff. Well, one of the formulas that we like to use is customer acquisition cost times the conversion rate, don't sweat it, I'm going to show you the next slide, we're going to go over this, equals the cost per lead. So that's going to tell us how much each lead cost us. And then you want to look at the number of targeted customers and then multiply that times the acquisition cost, and that's going to give you your starting budget. So let's look at this, and this will break it down a little bit more. So let's just say that you have a client, and that client is worth a thousand dollars, right? Uh, that client brings in, uh, and depending upon what kind of business, you know, this may be way more for somebody, you know, that's selling, you know, little trinkets. But you know, if you have a recurring client that's going to come back and transact with you, then let's just say they're worth a thousand dollars to your company, which is probably low for a lot of industries. And then if you want to, you want to say that the acceptable customer acquisition, you would pay one fifth of that. If, if I came to you and I said, Hey, if I could bring you a, a bunch more customers, how much would you pay me? And you agreed that, yeah, I'd pay 200 bucks all day long to make a thousand. Okay. 
And then we're going to, let's just say that in marketing, a good um, conversion rate is 3%. It means that people that are actually going to raise their hand and say, I want to do business with you would be 3%. So we're going to do that math. And ultimately, the acceptable customer acquisition cost times the conversion rate is going to give you a $6 per lead cost is what you need to um, is, is figuring on. And then let's just say that we want to have a minimal target of customers, say that you can onboard uh, 10 customers. That's what you're looking for. I wanna get 10 customers every month. Then you need to have a budget of about $2,000 in order to, um, to get that going. And you know, that's just simple math. And I think a lot of times people think that, again, I've been doing marketing you know, with it for a long time and they think if they go out and pop a couple of pretty pictures up on a, on a social media page that the clients are going to flock to them. And that's really just not the case. So if you don't get your budget right, if you don't do this type of calculation, if you don't know what the average customer value is, and if you're not okay with doing that acquisition cost, um, then, you know, you're, you're really going to have a very difficult time uh, in my in my assessment of being able to have predictable revenue. And we'll talk a little bit more about what I've seen as far as clients not wanting to have, um, you know, they don't want to give up something in order to entice a client to to pick them or to engage with them. And then oftentimes they don't have a strategy for when they get the client uh, in there. So we're going to talk a little bit about effective marketing strategy. And of course, we're, we're talking about marketing, but you need to think about what happens when they come in the door. How do you onboard a client? Um, I read a book, it's been a while back, but it was basically about subscription-based businesses. And it was a, a bit of an older book. I wish I could think of the title, uh, but it had to do with like subscription-based um, you know, really magazines. It was an old book. And, um, but I was, I was kind of fascinated by it because they, they pointed out something that I believe, and this is my mantra here, where uh, when I onboard new clients, when I onboard new staff, that if that engagement goes poorly, that you're going to cut your, uh, the, the lifetime value of that client by at least 50%. And they did studies using magazines uh, sales and they, uh, you know, if a mistake was made or anything happened during that onboarding or during those initial phases, they cut it by 50%. So we're going to talk about marketing strategy, but, you know, that's really just the tip of the spear. That's going to get them, that's going to get them interested in calling you and, you know, putting them as a potential customer. But then you really need to think about what I'll call the back of the house or the other things that is, um, important for you to uh, to keep them in the bucket. And ultimately, digital marketing is like a football game. You've got to have a full, complete strategy to win. You need to have a good looking website that represents the uh, we do. We call it five things in five seconds. And that's going to be a website that's going to have a call to action. It's going to have your, you know, your phone number predominantly displayed. You need to have uh, something on there about what clients say about you because more and more we're seeing people with uh, their crowdsourcing, their, their, uh, their buying habits. They're basically asking their friends and they don't really care what you say. They care what people say about you and needs to load fast. Really, you know, like I said, we kind of moved off of the Ask BIS uh, designs business because back then when we started that company, it was really about just having a, a website. That was the big thing. Now you don't need a 20 page, 50 page website for most companies because quite frankly, no one's going to look at it. They're going to make decisions, split second decisions based off of of your website and things, uh, you know, based off the look and feel and, and the, the quality of your ads and how well you connect with solving that problem for them that we discussed earlier. And then you got to have social media. It's just, there's no better way, no more cost effective way than social media. You're going to have to do paid ads. You're going to have to do email marketing if you really want to, um, 
to be effective and you're going to need search engine optimization and there's again that back of the house kind of stuff that you're going to need to be doing in order to um to be really effective at being able to predict that revenue and that's where you know uh every time like when COVID hit, um, you know, that was a you know big challenge that I saw clearly. And we immediately began, I began looking at, you know, what does this mean? And trying to, to take uh, processes and procedures and, and all. And we really have made some great strides within our company uh, during a year that, you know, most people have, you know, not a lot of fans of year 2020. Okay, so we'll move on here. Let's let's talk about analyzing your audience, knowing what channel, basically, what social media channel you need to be on. Uh, Facebook is a is still the largest. It's uh, it's shrinking a little bit. Instagram is uh, gaining, uh, but Facebook, tons of people on Facebook, uh, mainly B two C. Uh, you know, business to consumer ages range all the way from 18 to 65 and beyond. Now we see Instagram really growing right now, mainly B2C still, although there's a lot of people that are on both those platforms that, um, that are, you know, trying to do B2B business or at least trying to get engagement in that. And then of course, LinkedIn is more of a business to business. And, you know, it's the business type people, ages primarily, ages 25 to 50. And then, of course, Pinterest is more for e-commerce. And most of the users on there are women. I think really if you look across those platforms, other than probably LinkedIn, there's going to be more women on uh, maybe a 60-40 or a 55-45 split, women to men, just because I think women are just uh, naturally more um, – you know, more social. So uh, slight, you know, predominance uh, in that. But when you go start going into like Pinterest and things like that, you um, you really follow, you know, you fall into a category. A lot of women are on, on Pinterest. So next thing we need to do really is look at your competitors. You know, what are they focusing on with their marketing efforts? Uh, that is something that is is huge is to you know know your competition know what they're doing um you know how much are they spending and the cool thing about in today's world is i can tell you how much uh you know not down to the penny but we can tell you how much they're spending on social media ads and it's like any other thing in the world um you know it's if if you're if there's a lot of competition in the market, you're going to have to spend more to get the uh, attention of your potential client. And so knowing how much they're spending is a huge thing because if you know your competitor is in the air conditioner or the attorney industry and you know you're going to go in and think you're going to spend five hundred dollars a month and compete with them you know you're just you're really not you're going to have to come up with some great strategy with some niche that is a, a we do that they're not touching so that you can actually uh get above them one thing that um that we we work with some air conditioning companies and one thing that we found was that uh they have um, their largest competitor doesn't offer 24 seven service. So one of the things that we did is, you know, we, you know, put, they were, they were game for getting tw given 24 seven service. And now their ads will show up above all of their competitors because they're doing 24 seven, uh, type of service. So there's ways that you can take smaller budgets and try to make it go further. But I think you have to go into it wide eyed because if you, you know, again, if you think you're going to build it and they're going to come most of the time, you're going to be, you're not going to be pleased with the outcome. And then also, uh, what are people responding to? Look and, and pay attention closely to what people like, because that is giving you a lot of insight into what is going to work for you. And, you know, we're going to talk about a little bit more later about doing A-B testing, but, uh, you know, run an ad. And again, it's really the same ad. It's going to have the same uh funnel flow or whatever and we'll talk about that in a minute but it's going to have the same uh, steps if you will 
to get them to ultimately call you or to purchase online or to fill out a form and book an appointment or whatever you're trying to accomplish. But we're going to use different images. We're going to use slightly different words and we're going to see which one performs better than the other one. And in a lot of ways, this type of marketing that I'm talking about is like building an oil well. And, you know, if you if you go out to build an oil well, you're going to have some some upfront cost and some upfront work. You're going to have to go figure out where the oil is, right? It's really very much the same with marketing. You're going to have to then uh, figure out how you're going to extract it. And you're going to have to drill holes and you're going to have to, you know, test the, the pipes that you're going to use and the pump size and all the above. But ultimately, once you get that thing pumping oil, all you're going to do then is continue to pump it and you're going to monitor it and until it runs, uh, it runs dry or, you know, the overhead of, of running the well, let's just say the, the cost of ads doesn't give you a high enough return on investment. And so you basically move on and you go try to find another well. Um, and again, how well is their website running? You know, what is, you know, looking at those competitors is we'll finish that. Now, one of the biggest things, uh, things and I'm using some some uh, corporate things just to you know you never know I don't want to give away secrets from our existing clients and stuff but I want to show you some good looking ads uh, that make a lot of sense and again you have to think about this because I have a lot of clients and you know I've done this a long time and they don't want to give anything away they feel like they're losing something well, you need to get over that to some degree, because if you're going to just do um, just, you know, marketing, spending money, you're giving it away. You're giving something away uh, to get in front of them. And so you may and you would do a lot better by giving an offer away that would get them introduced to your service. And again, hopefully your back end of the house is going to be able to live up to the the marketing end of the house and you're going to keep that client. They're going to continue to transact with you and you'll make up that in, you know, in spades over time. But here's an ad here on, for Lyft and they're trying to get new users. That's what the goal of this ad is, is to get new people to sign up. And if you'll sign up with them, uh, they'll give you 50 bucks worth of in-ride credit. So basically they're going to have to give away that first ride or two uh, to get you to see how well their service works. And I like that they have that use code, you know, 50 FB. And that is very important. If you're a restaurant owner, you know, uh, if you're a retail shop or if you're not, uh, if you're in those, you can actually program those things within the software, you know, in, into the uh, point of sale system so that you can actually track and say, okay, uh, that ad we spent a thousand dollars on, you know, we hooked, uh, we hooked, you know, 50 new clients on it. And we know that the lifetime value of a client is a thousand dollars. So you can say, yeah, I feel really good about this. This is a very well, uh, producing oil well, and I'm going to keep running that thing till she's dry. So again, you want to know all that. Here's another one for a, a canvas shop. And, you know, they're giving away um, a 60% off when you order today. So of course you got to know the cost of, uh, of how much things, you know, cost in order to, um, to do that. But nice picture, nice looking, clean looking house with a nice, you know, dog who don't love dogs. And they have a, a, a strong call to action that's very clear that you're going to get 60% off if you uh, if you simply you know purchase, click that link, and then boom, you go off. Um, another thing, uh, just a couple other ads, and this is for something that you know you might think would be hard, you know, selling insurance. Well, get a quick personalized insurance quote today. Um, and you're just a couple clicks away from a quick quote. Again frictionless, how easy you can, uh, you can make something is going to make all of the difference in the world. And ultimately, I'm sure at some point there's going to be some questions. Now, on some of these insurances, it may be simple enough that you can just fill out the form, but some of it is going to get them to a point where they say, you know, um, you're going to have to have an agent call you back. Well, in the process that they're fixing to take this person through to get a quote, 
they've captured all of that information so that they can do a good follow-up. And uh, you know, like I've said several times, you want to be quick on the draw to do that follow-up because if somebody needs insurance, I'm not sure exactly how long that buying cycle is, but I'm sure it's pretty quick. So you want to be quick to call them back. And of course, we all know the Dollar Shave Club really, um, you know, all of this for a $5 new membership and they're driving new uh, new things and they're giving a sampling of their products so that people can actually try them and they're gonna hook them on some type of uh, recurring service that is gonna automatically ship to them, but they're giving them some of their products and they're gonna give them to them, of course, probably in sizes and it may be that they're going uh, with products that don't cost very much money. I met with a, a, a restaurant owner uh, just recently and we were strategizing together and he has a particular um, entree, not, excuse me, not an entree, but an appetizer. And he literally has uh, 90 cents in that appetizer. Well, that would be a great product to, it's really delicious too. And that would be a great product to market uh, you know, to say on, on slow nights or whatever, to come in and uh, get a free appetizer or and the specific appetizer that he has a very low cost in. So again, you need to think through what you're doing so that you're, um, so that it really makes sense and you're getting the most bang for the buck. Here's a couple of tips for creating uh, calls to actions. And one is you want to start with a strong action verb order, buy, get, you know, um, something that is going to, you know, it's an action, you know, that's what you're looking, making them want to do. And you, in order to get that call to action, you want a very strong response. Get 75% off now, redeem your limited time offer today. So, you know, the kind of the burning platform kind of approach where um, if they act now, they're going to get it. If not, uh, that, that offer may go away or whatever. And then you want to create a reason. You have to give people, you know, people, uh, and I could show you tons of things socially that we've seen through history where people uh, do what they're incentivized to do. And you want to tell them exactly what's in it for them. No questions asked. You saw all those ads we looked at. They were quick. They went straight to the point. And you want to motivate them to go ahead and execute right now. And, you know, that's a, a very important part of it. And most of the time, it gets down to saving money, making money, you know, getting, a, getting in shape, something that's going to make them you know, a desirable thing they want at a discounted rate or a deal uh, people respond to. They Everybody's looking for a deal, right? Uh, a couple other things is even the color. You know, uh, they've done studies on housing markets and everything. You know, certain colors really are appealing to people and they cause people to take action. And then you want to test. You want to do that A-B testing that I talked about earlier where we want to go and have it to where um, they're identifying which ones they're clicking on. And you can even do it, we're, we're doing some marketing for a gym owner and we noticed that certain, the, you know, the ad, uh, you know, it had, of course, fit looking people, males and females. And we saw that the female did a lot better than the male. And, you know, so, we of course went that direction and 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 used the female, uh, you know, it, to do the marketing. So again, you really want to look at it and you want to dig in deep and you need to look at that. You know, not every day, but once a month, you need to take a good look at it and and see what's working and what's not, and you make minor adjustments. And again, if you've done that other stuff we talked about earlier, then it's really just a matter of tweaking and things get really cool, they get really exciting whenever you're, whenever you're uh, bringing in money and whenever you show a business owner that they can have some predictable revenue is a very attractive thing and that's really the whole purpose behind Summit Marketing. Here's a, a couple other ones because when you look at it, you're basically gonna take them on a journey. 
you're going to take them from an ad and then you're going to walk them down the path and you want it to be a narrow path. You don't, you want to take them to a landing page or what we call a squeeze page. So they don't have other options. If you give them two options, they're liable to take neither because they, people just freak out and they won't move forward. They, uh, you want to have them one thing, shop, Tom, surprise sale. Boom, you click 20% off right now, shop now. And you want to kind of have that landing page clean so that um, that it's a clear direction of what the outcome needs to be because uh, you don't want to have mixed messages because you'll wind up with nothing on pages that have mixed messages. Another thing is retargeting. This is something really that is not being done in this market very well. Uh, large companies do it very, very, very well. Uh, but we are, I, you know, I don't know, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but this is something that I find very valuable. And if you couple this retargeting with, uh, and I'll explain what it is, if you couple it with a, like search engine optimization ads, like pay-per-click type ads, it's really, really, really effective because whenever people search for something, that is an active event. They are actively looking for that, that uh, problem to be solved. And then if you can retarget them, again, there's, they search for something, step one, internet user, they search for something and they visit your website. Then they leave your website, they don't purchase, they're not ready to buy yet. And what happens is later on, after they leave your website, they're going to see ads pop up on all kinds of places in their social media feeds, on display ads with other web pages that they're on. And it's really quite effective because you can have your ads and the algorithm does all the work in the background. Um, and you could actually have ads on weather.com and places where if you just went directly to them and said, hey, I want an ad on your page, it would cost an absolute fortune. And then you can, um, you know, that retargeting is going to continue on with that sale, that impression that is, um, that you've made, you know, again, with that active search. And then ultimately they're going to convert. And if you're doing the back of the house right, they're going to become a loyal client of yours. So that's the kind of stuff that retargeting will do. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And it would uh, require more time to go over them, but I'll just touch on a couple of them. The really neat thing about retargeting is that um, you can have an email list and a of existing clients and you can do a lookalike um, campaign basically so that then the algorithms, the, you know, the, um, the, the, the smart people that have all these data points on all of us uh, because we've, you know, like things, click things, they're collecting these huge databases of, of, um, of points of interest that, uh, that, that we like as consumers they will match that much better than you could do. And it's really a fraction of the cost. So if you find a list that's working, you have a, a particular list of people that are transacting well with you, you can put that in and build a lookalike audience and actually transact with a broader audience and bring in new, new clients. So here's a couple of other uh, benefits of that is that, you know, the, the retargeting is that the, client has or the potential client, the visitor has already expressed interest in your brand because they came to your website. Uh, and then another thing is, is that you're, you're pushing that brand awareness on them and they're seeing you over and over and over again. And there's some things that you can do here to make your money be more effective in that if you understand the buying cycle of a particular product, I had a, a guy at a car dealership tell me that, um, and he said that uh, people, whenever they go in and they drive their first car, a very large percentage of them, like 60% of them are, are in a new car. They've made the buying decision within 72 hours. So that's why there's a lot of money it takes to get people to buy cars is because that buying window is very, very, very short. So you have to, you have to really get out in front of them and you have to hit them a lot of different ways. And, then of course you gotta have them the great experience when they come to the dealership and the like. 
Another thing is that data-driven approach where you're using data that's gathered from cookies so you're able to segment that audience much in the way that I talked about with social media you can do this with retargeting and you can uh, do it based off of of um, you know again the uh, email list or lookalike campaigns you can build lookalike campaigns off of what you already have so you can expand that and ultimately it gets better all the time because the people that convert or go further down into that funnel they click and they actually purchase or or whatever now all of a sudden the the analysis gets to be where they're looking at the data points that have been collected you know, through social media and through, uh, you know, browsing habits and the like, they're looking deeper at this, my avatar is now getting more defined. So over time, that gets smarter and you're actually retargeting better clients than what your uh, original list might have had. And again, it's automated. It just happens. You don't have to, um, you don't have to, you know, keep your brain engaged to the level because this system is doing that. Retargeting is huge. And what you see, the end result is, is things get sold because your websites are going to see a 726% increase in, visita in visitation after about a month of running it. So all of a sudden now we're going to get our clicks way up on our website. And again, it just gets better and better and better over time. All right, so, you know, finally looking at kind of what you need to do is you got to set goals. And again, you got to start with, with, with what's the client worth to you and you got to come all the way down the pike and you need to go into this with eyes wide open. And, you know, too often I see people, they think they're going to post a couple of pretty pictures on a social media page and their, their phone's going to ring off the hook. And, you know, sadly that just, you know, that just really, you know, I haven't experienced a lot of that. So uh, you can't expect instant results, but you do need to expect results. And, um, you know, I guess if you define, because we have some clients that are like, look, I really don't want any, any new clients per se, but I want to keep myself out in the marketplace. I want people to see uh, that we're here and we're relative. I want when people find me, I want them to go to my social media page and I want them to see that, that we're, you know, we're actively engaged. We're posting all the time and we have all that. So again, this, this really what I'm framing here today for you guys is people who want to grow their book brother company, you know, that want to actually come out of this, you know, pandemic or whatever the heck we're in and, uh, you know, come out swinging. Uh, and then you want to review those results consistently uh, and then make those tweaks. But the beauty of it is if you do that front end right, really you're tweaking on the back end and you want to measure that ROI. You want to look and see, uh, you know, hey, if I if I put a dollar in this thing, I get three bucks back. Well, dude, uh, I'd rob banks if I had that. And I think as business owners, in order for us to really get ourselves in a position to where we can be our very best, we're going to, you know, we have to have a predictable revenue stream. There's nothing that hurts a business more than, you know, unpredictable rev revenue streams. And we've all lived it, you know, this year has been very, you know, unsettling, you know, we got the election, we got the pandemic, we got all the social disrest and, you know, it's just been one thing, the hurricanes here on the coast, you know, we've had a very troubling year. So that's really why we wanted to do this was hopefully to be able to help uh, folks. So why start now? And really, uh, 62% of people are shopping more online. There's, you know, look at, look at Amazon, you know, Bezos made a bunch of money and that, you know, will probably not go, go down. I don't know a lot of people that just love going grocery shopping or love doing the, you know, the, the basically the commodity of the household type shopping. I think a lot of people will, uh, will pick either to have it delivered or, you know, order it online and go pick it, have it, you know, put in the trunk of the car or whatever. And for a lot of reasons, you know, COVID being one of them, but also just the convenience of it. And uh, so I think that's going to remain. And then 46% uh, percent of people are spending four or more hours a day on their phones. So half of the population is spending over four hours on their phone. Well, 
you know, that's maybe good, maybe bad, whatever, but it's, it's true. And you want to have a place in their, their life, right? If you're a good business owner, you're providing a good service. If you're solving a problem and you're doing it well, then, you know, you want to have your place and you don't want one of your competitors taking over uh, that place. So you want to be there. And there's been a 51% increase in social media users since March of 2020. There has been a flood of new, net new people come to social media in general because, again, we're social creatures. And if we can't get it for real, we'll take it virtual. And I think that number just expresses that as, as clearly and, you know, in three lines of text, that's a, a very, uh, you know, very clear way of, of expressing that. So, you know, really now it's time. Uh, to stand out and get those results. So what we're doing as a company is we're doing a, a special offer. Um, actually, myself and Josh will uh, take a look at, uh, we're calling it a digital marketing kickstart. And it's a thousand dollars worth of value what we're talking about. And what we're going to do is have that digital strategy consultation. One of the first things I ask clients is, you know, how much is a client worth to you? And they don't know. And I promise it's weird. You know, it's why the most successful people have coaches. It's not really that the coach is often that's that sharp. But uh, I think it's really because they have a conversation. They ask questions. If you want better answers, you got to ask better questions. We're going to talk about things like what's the lifetime value of a client of yours. We're going to help you come up with some ways to at least get a frame around what that is. We're going to look at the, the marketing that you've done or that you are currently doing and do an analysis of whether it's working, whether you're actually turning a return on investment on it or whether it's a dud. And we're going to look at, um, you know, your competition. What are they doing? Because honestly, that drives the big portion of the conversation as to the cost. If you're in a, a niche market or if you have a, a we do that is very uh, distinct from the me too, that that's what I always call it is, a, you know, here's a we do. This is something that only we do. And that's really what you need to be talking about. And so, you know, you can have a lower marketing budget. And then, um, you know, look at the uh, the time of day which people are engaging. Look at your overall, um, you know, digital marketing branding kit. Are your ads consistent so that uh, if I looked at them, would that would I know that was you without having to think too hard? People don't want to think. They always take in the path of least resistance, and um, you know, it's, that's just true. So we'll help you with, uh, you know, picking out your color schemas, picking out your fonts, picking out your, your basic layouts, making sure you're using the same logo and just really just be surprised how many people aren't doing that. And then we'll also look at an SEO ranking report so that you're able to um, take a look at that and see, you know, whether you're even in the game or not. A lot of times people, you know, they're not really even in the game because, you know, the, the, the old saying is, where's the best place to bury a, a body? It's on page two of, of uh, Google because nobody ever goes there. If you don't find what you're looking at on page one, you change your search terms is the way that, you know, human behavior has proven. So uh, if you'd like to take us up on that, all you have to do is free for all webinar attendees. And I'm actually, I'm streaming this out on our, uh, on our channels. Uh, it may take us, if we get, you know, a big response, it may take a few weeks before we can get to you, but we will get to you. And really all you need to do is um, email events at askbis.com, make reference to this particular webinar about, you know, how to, how to build a, build your business in, you know, in uncertain times and we will have someone follow up with you and I'll personally come out and we'll take a look at what you got going and um, we'll help you. We'll, you know, no obligation uh, and see how we can help you. So I guess we'll open it up to questions and we've got just a few minutes left. Uh, Josh, do we have any questions? You know, I didn't even go over our poll questions. Gosh, I'm going to get fired. Let me, uh, let me pop open a couple of poll questions here and uh, just want to let you guys take a quick look at this. So the question is, how much time, uh, no, excuse me, how much is the lifetime value of a client worth your business? 
We'll leave that open for just a couple of seconds. See if people will respond. Got a few coming in. I don't know. Not many people are responding. Um, okay. So we'll just end it. Basically, 500 and 2,500. Um, that's what we came up with. So, 500 and 2,500 dollars um, is the lifetime value of a client. So, you guys, I mean, again, uh, you have enough of a budget to um, to actually go out and spend some money to get some predictable income. And um, here's another question: Is do you have an effective and repeatable ad campaign currently running? Do you have something right now that is bringing in predictable revenue every month that you can you can you know hang your hat on to say, hey, all I got to do is keep doing this, and I'm going to get uh, I'm going to get more fish in the bucket. Yeah, all. All knows, hundred um, percent. No, 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 no. So that's um, you know that's something that the reason why we started Summit Marketing, hands down. And it's much more challenging. I'll be honest with you, it's a lot more challenging to do it this way uh, than post pretty pictures in in a lot of ways. But um, you know, at the end of the day, you're never getting fired. A great salesperson's never getting fired. If you can um, produce and help companies uh, build those um, uh, results, then you're going to be 100% in, uh, in, in shape. Okay. So um, Josh is telling me that he is muted and cannot answer questions. Or excuse me, can't see if we have any questions. Let me open this up. Um, Can you chat about uh, OS's TikTok campaign and how you think TikTok uh, can move towards brand marketing and customer acquisition focus? Laura, that's a great question, and I want to be completely honest with you. Um, we haven't recommended because of the you know the controversy with what people are doing on TikTok, and I get it. Um, you know, we have stayed away from TikTok, um, so. That is something that um, we just really haven't done. I know that TikTok has an incredible following, as well as Reels on um, um, it. You know, is you know Reels on the Instagram, and now you've you've responded here. Um, yeah. And and you know that's a good thing, and that that gives me something to go look at and to think about. Um, I believe that it is definitely very, 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 uh, very likely that you could. And uh, in some of the research for this, just you know, got a couple minutes here. I'll just talk about. I was looking at uh, some particular ads. They weren't in TikTok, but they were more along those lines. You know, the short, quick little videos. And it was for a uh, gym membership and it was, um, you know, it was very TikTok ish if you ask me. So I would suspect that a hundred percent that if you had the right type of product and that was your, your avatar that you were looking to speak to in TikTok, uh, yeah, you could probably, um, you could probably, uh, drive a lot of business your way, obviously. Yeah. So, I wouldn't rule it out by any stretch of the uh, imagination. Um, so, uh, so very much. Um, wow. And um, I'll just read that as well. Laura's uh, comment on some other things. Great. Well, listen, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, be very. Um, very conscious of your time. We're going to end. And again, if y'all would like to speak or to meet or whatever, you can email events at askbis.com and we'd be happy to, uh, to you know, step in and try to give you guys a hand. Anything that we can do, we're here.